Okay, so The Observer. Uh, and I've got lots of uh, videos on YouTube. Okay, so this is, uh, we're on camera, so if you speak, uh, I might ask for people to speak, but don't, you don't have to speak if you don't want to, because your voice will be picked up. Okay, so this is a mug, my, my usual one, this is a mug. So a mug is an object, yeah? A mug is an object and it has a shape. And a mug is a limited object. And a, and a mug is a meaningless object. These are all quite important words. It's limited, it's meaningless, it's kind of a neutral object, and it has, it's got limits. So, when you see this mug, is, any, is anybody, you don't have to speak, you can nod or whatever, but you can speak if you want to, but you're going to come. Is anybody the mug? No. No, no one's the mug, great. So a mug is an object. And when you see an object, or you observe an object, or you witness an object, or perceive an object, it's very clear that this mug that you witness, or you perceive, or you observe, is not you. Yeah? It's an object. Because you'd be, you'd be, you, it, there could be a confusion that like somebody could believe they're the mug, because they see a mug, but actually, with it, some detached observing, it's clear that actually this is an object that's being observed. It's not you. You cannot be the mug. You are the observer of the mug. Now, a mug can pass before you, but even if a mug passes before you, you're still not the mug, yeah? So if a mug, mug, and even, like, if a mug's in front of you, you're still not the mug, and if the mug is not there, you're still not the mug, it doesn't matter. If it's there or it's not there, it's passing, you are not the mug, you are the observer of the mug. And also notice that when you observe an object, an object is limited, the observer of the object is not the limits of the object. Is that kind of clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, okay. And also with this mug, because it's, it's a, a neutral or a meaningless object, there's no confusion or enmeshment that the mug could be you. It's like there's a attached space between the mug and you. Nobody believes they're a mug, hopefully not. So, uh, okay, the next thing is, so that's the, that's the basic process of self-inquiry. That was the process of inquiring whether I am the object that I see or I'm not this object I see. I'm actually, I'm not the object, I'm the observer of the object. And it's very, very clear. No one's going to argue with me that, no, I think the object is really me. Mm. Yeah, okay. So the next thing is thoughts. Okay. So thoughts. One notices that thoughts are like objects that pass by, doesn't it? Sometimes there are thoughts, sometimes there's no thoughts. So, now this, all these things that I'm saying now, these are experiential questions. I'm not asking you to think about this. I'm asking you to have an experience. So try not to go to your head to think. Now, thoughts are passing by. Is there an observer of thoughts? Is there a witnesser of thoughts? Okay, okay, don't worry, don't worry. Just keep practicing, but we've got to hear where there's, there's a clear observing of thoughts, yeah? I'm sure there's a clear observing of thoughts. So, yes, there's clear observing. Something is watching the thoughts which is not the thoughts. This is an experience, not, not for you to think about it, but something is observed. Okay, good. Everybody's, everybody's on board. Okay, so whether thoughts are coming and going or whether they're, they're here or not, they're, they're, they're relevant. The observer of thoughts is not thoughts. Okay, good. Um, okay, so the next one is uh, we can do. So these we'll get, now get to get get to some more interesting ones, pictures and images. Let's say a memory comes up from when you're three years old, or whatever, or images. Is that which observes images come and go? Is that an image? No. No. Good. Because it can't be. It's, an image is like, you know, it's not here, and then it's here. It's an object that comes and goes. That which is observing. But these are experiential questions. They're not intellectual. You, you, you get them through your own experience. So, the, so thoughts can come and go, and that which observes thoughts is not thought. Is that clear? That which observes pictures come and go is not a picture. Now, here's the next one. What about, uh, is there a sense of location? If there is a sense of location, go to that which observes location. You know, if something is observing something's here or over there, 
but something that the observer, be in the position of the observer of location. If anyone's in the observer of location, is the observer of location, has that got a location? No. No, good. So you just, oh, you just answer, good. So you just experience this, that which observes location, because a location is like an object, but that which is observing or perceiving or witnessing objects is before objects, because if something is observing a mug, the observer of a mug is not a mug, and the observer of a location is not in location. Well, here's another one, you know, and you might not get these all on the first day, but, you know, something observes time like one second passing, two seconds passing, and something is observing time, there is an observer or a witnesser of time which is not interested in time. So there's something which observes time which has no interest in time. Is that observing, in that space of observing, does time exist? See, th from your own experience. No, good. Yes, answer from your own experience. So what you can see in this process is that as you go to the observer of an object, <clears throat> in that position, that the experience of the object is not in the observer. So a mug, the observer of a mug is not a mug. The observer of an image is not an image. The observer of location is not location. The observer of time is not in time. Yeah, these are from your experience. Don't go into your head. Never go into your head. Because it's not, never, never, because if you go into your head, you just be thinking, but you already should be in the observer of uh, your thinking. So then you then check in this space that you're in right now, is there any experience of contraction or limitation? Is there anything that feels tight or constricted? And if there is, whatever this constriction or this tightness or this limit is, can you be the witnesser? or the observer of that, yeah? Does that make sense? So you just keep going back as an experience, not as an intellectual thing. What is witnessing any sense of limit or contraction or witnessing in my experience? So if you are feeling, you know, contracted by the body, by space, by limits, by time, by feelings, by images, then you want to go to the observer, even noise. You know, if there's experience, there's not much noise here today, but if there was noise, what observes noise? Is, the observe, is that which is observing noise, which is not interested in noise, does that experience any noise? So you just keep, keep going. So I'm just going to put it off for a second.